All right, so let's have fun with text shadows. I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can use text shadows for your text to be able to create really cool effects very easily. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm working here with 7.1, but you can use 7.0 if you want to. I have my colors here, and now what we're going to do is style this text that I have here. So this is an H1, and I want to make it a little bit less boring. So let's start with the basics. So we're going to be creating a text shadow. Now, the text shadow is very similar to the box shadow in that it requires a couple of parameters to be able to set the shadow itself. So let's go ahead and add that here, text shadow. So the first parameter is going to be the X axis. So we're going to decide whether we want the shadow to be shown up through the left side of the text or through the right side of the text. So if we use a negative number, the shadow is going to be pulled towards the left. If we use a positive one, towards the right. So let's go ahead and set this to, how about minus five pixels. Now the second parameter is going to be the Y axis. So it's going to determine whether we want the shadow to show from the top of the text or from the bottom of the text. I want to push this one downwards. So I'm going to use a positive number. And as you can see, as soon as I do that, we already have that shadow happening. Now, there are two other things that you can do here. One of them is to set the blur. So if you want to create a more shadowy looking shadow, then you can use the blur to set how shadowy you want it to look. Now, I want a pretty solid shadow. Actually, I want a completely solid shadow. So I'm going to set that blur to zero. And then the last parameter is going to be the color. So I don't want mine to be the same color as the text because we can't really see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this brown color that I have here and apply that. And just like that, you can see how we have a much less boring text in front of us. So this is the absolute basic way that you can use text shadows in order to create a pretty cool effect for your client site. Okay, so for the next customization, we are going to be using two text effects instead of just the text shadow. So the first one is going to be this outline text that we covered already on the blog. So it allows you to create this sort of look for any font that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the code from here. We're going to remove this. And you can see that as soon as I add that code, our text turns into outline. Now, I don't want it to look exactly this way, so I want to tweak a couple of things. The first thing is going to be the fallback color. So I don't want the font to turn to black in case the outline doesn't load in some older browsers. I want it to turn back to beige. So I'm going to use that color over here. And then for the fill color, this one right now is transparent. That's perfect because I do want it to be transparent. The stroke, I want this to be slightly thicker. So I'm going to make that three pixels. And I don't want the outline to be black. I want it to be brown. So I'm going to grab this hex code and plop it in here. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and add text shadow. Text shadow. And I'm going to be setting this very similar to how we did it before. Now, in this case, I don't want the shadow to be pulled to the left side. I want it to show up from the right side or I want to sort of overflow to the right side of the font. So I'm going to be using a positive number for the first axis. And I'm going to use also a positive number for the second one because I want it to be pushed downwards. And just like that, you can see how our effect is coming to fruition. So you can see how we have that sort of offset background color for the font along with the outline, which looks so incredibly cool. So let's go ahead and finish setting this up. Now, it's not really necessary to add the other two parameters because right now the blur is set to zero by default because we're not really adding anything to it. And the color is already taking on the color of the original font, so there's no real need to add that. But I'm going to add those two values in here just in case you want to play around with them. So I'm going to grab this color. That's my beige color, yes. So I'm going to leave it like that. And as you can see, we now have our second text effect, which looks so amazing. And now you can apply it to pretty much any site that you're working on. 
Now let's move on to our final effect. Now this one I have to say is my favorite out of the three, even though the other two are really cool. The third one, I just, I was so happy when I, <laughs> when I created it the first time. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that outline code again. And this time we're going to be using it slightly differently. So let's leave that there. Now for the color fallback, actually, I don't want the font to be transparent this time. So I'm going to be removing the transparency and also that color here that, like I mentioned, this one is the one that falls back into the font falls back into if the outline doesn't load in older browsers. So I, because I'm not setting the font to transparent, then I don't really need that fallback color anyway, because we're going to have the original color of the font showing through. And so I'm just left with the outline. So this is just regular text and we have the outline on top of it. Now for the stroke, I'm going to make this one thicker once again, and I'm going to set this to brown instead of black. With these two things in place, we can now add our text shadow, but we're not going to be adding one text shadow. We're going to be adding three. So we're going to get a very cool retro vintage effect that I think you're going to absolutely love. So let's go ahead and set this to text shadow. Text shadow. Was it right the first time? Anyway, let's go ahead and add the first one. So I'm going to set this one very similar to how I did it the first time. So we're going to keep that negative number so that the shadow gets pulled towards the left side. And then we're going to push it again downwards by pixels. And as you can see, we now have actually this is a pretty cool effect. We could leave it like this if we wanted to, but we're going to keep going because I really want to show you how to create that sort of retro look. So for this text shadow, I'm going to be using brown. So I'm going to set the blur to zero and I'm going to add in the brown color for the shadow. So right now this looks pretty cool but we don't want to stay in just one text shadow. We want to add two more. So the way I'm going to be doing this and to keep this organized so you can see it better, what I'm going to do is go and I'm going to add a return there and then we're going to separate each text shadow. We're going to sort of stack them and we're going to separate them with a comma. So we're going to add a comma here and then we're going to create our second text shadow. So this one is going to be a dark teal color, I believe. Yes. So let's go ahead and set this one to minus 10 pixels because we have to account for the spacing that the first text shadow is occupying. So I still want this one to be sort of like five pixels thick. So I'm accounting for that five pixels that I need to move it downwards to be able to show just five pixels. So I'm going to set this to 10 pixels, then zero. And we're going to be using this dark teal color over here. Okay, so this is looking awesome so far, but I think we really need that third text shadow here. So I'm going to go ahead and add another coma. And then I'm going to create that third shadow by setting this to minus 15 pixels. And then setting this to 15 pixels, zero. And then for the color, I'm going to be using this orange that I have here. So let's paste that in. And just like that, we have an amazing retro look that people are going to think it's an image, but it's not because it's super responsive and your clients are going to be able to tweak it because it's literally text. So there you have it. Now you know three different ways that you can create really cool looking text effects for your client site with just a little bit of code.